Chinese ancient wisdom tales are a treasure trove of ancient wisdom, offering timeless lessons on virtue, cunning, and the complexities of human nature. Through captivating narratives about emperors, sages, and mythical creatures, they guide us in morality, strategy, and the art of living harmoniously. 1. Harmony is a blessing. Excess is a curse. Individuals with a fiery temperament can ignite everything around them like a blazing flame encountering a flammable object. Those with a dry and harsh demeanor can be as cold and ruthless as ice, mercilessly destroying whatever they touch. And those who are rigid and stubborn resemble still water or decaying wood devoid of life. Such people often find it challenging to build a successful life and spread happiness. Two of Confucius's disciples, Zigong and Zilu, were highly esteemed by the master, sometimes even leaving Confucius undecided on whom he admired more. One day, Confucius was asked, Between Zigong and Zilu, who is superior? Confucius replied, Zigong tends to overdo things, while Zilu often fails to meet the required standards, sometimes not doing enough. Hearing this, the inquirer asked, So, Zigong is better? Confucius clarified, Excess and insufficiency are equal in their faults. The best approach is to strike a balance, achieving the intended benefit. In work and life, it's not about going to extremes or falling short. The real challenge often lies in finding the right measure. This concept of moderation, or finding the middle way, is the deep-seated secret to a harmonious and fulfilling life. 2. The Art of Persuading a King King Kong Kong of the Key State, in a fit of rage over the death of his beloved horse, ordered the execution of the horse's caretaker, momentarily forgetting the principles of justice and law. Yet, Yan Zi managed to intervene successfully, not by merely appeasing the king or condemning the caretaker, but by invoking King Kong Kong's sense of compassion, leading to the king's enlightenment and remorse. Remarkable. With gentle and calm words, Yan Zi transformed the monarch's heart. King Kong Tong of Qi treasured a particular horse entrusted to a caretaker, Unexpectedly, the horse died one day. Enraged, the king deemed it a deliberate act and ordered his soldiers to execute the caretaker on the spot. Yan Zi, witnessing this, intervened, asking the king, How did ancient wise kings like Yao and Shun begin their executions? Puzzled, Kan Kong hesitated and then ordered, Release him. Put him in jail for now until we decide his punishment. Yan Zi then suggested, This man doesn't yet know why he's facing death, thinking it an injustice. Allow me to explain his crimes before sentencing. The king agreed. Yan Zi outlined three capital offenses. You've committed three grave crimes deserving death. First, failing the king's command to care for the horse leading to its death. Second, the loss of the king's treasured horse is another. Third, causing the king to be maligned for executing a man over a horse, stirring resentment among the people and disdain from other states. Your actions have brought domestic resentment and international scorn, risking national security for a single horse. Are you aware of your crimes? Now you'll be temporarily imprisoned. Moved by Yan Zi's reasoning, King Kan Kong expressed remorse, saying, Let him go. I must not earn a reputation for cruelty. Reflection King Kan Kong's initial reaction to his horse's death led him to extreme measures, clouded by anger and devoid of reason. However, Yan Zi's intervention, while seemingly placating the king and indicting the caretaker, truly awakened the king's humanitarian spirit, prompting his awakening and repentance. Indeed, the power of soft-spoken, serene words can lead to profound change in the hearts of rulers. 3. Haste Doesn't lead to success. Calmness brings happiness. 
individuals prone to impulsive and hot-headed behavior often fail to accomplish their tasks, while those who remain calm and composed are more likely to find happiness. In 260 BC, during the war between the state of Qin and the state of Zhao, Zhao She, the Zhao general, led his troops with the strategy of direct confrontation against the Qin forces. The Qin general, Bai Qi, deliberately allowed Zhao Xi to taste initial victories, letting the Zhao army win a few minor battles. Zhao Xi, growing overconfident and boastful, led a massive force of 400,000 to face off with Qin's army in a decisive battle. The Qin forces feigned defeat in several encounters, further inflating Zhao. Xi's arrogance without him realizing he was being lured into a trap. As he pursued the retreating Qin army to their main camp, Zhao, Xi suddenly received news that his rear camp had been overtaken by Qin soldiers and their supply lines were cut off. The Qin army had successfully encircled the entire Zhao force. Trapped without supplies and without reinforcements, Zhao Xi's army endured over 40 days of hardship. The soldiers, suffering and demoralized, lost the will to fight. Attempting to break the siege, Zhao Xi led a charge only to fall into an ambush where thousands of arrows from the Qin forces awaited. With the news of their general's death, the remaining Zhao troops surrendered en masse. This story exemplifies how rashness and overconfidence can lead to downfall and defeat. In contrast, strategic patience and calmness can secure victory and happiness, demonstrating the timeless wisdom that success comes not from haste, but from thoughtful and measured action. 4. Going out in white, returning in black. One sunny day, young Bo went out for a stroll. He left his house dressed in white, but halfway through his journey, he was caught in a rainstorm soaking his clothes completely. Seeking shelter at a relative's house, he was lent a dark-colored coat. Once the rain stopped, young Bo donned the dark coat and headed home. His dog, not recognizing him in the unfamiliar attire, started barking and biting at him. Young Bo was about to strike the dog in anger when his brother, Young Chu, intervened advising against it. He explained that the dog's reaction was natural, given the drastic change in appearance from white to black. Wouldn't our white dog seem strange to us too if it went out white and came back black? He asked. Commentary. Young Bo left in a white coat and returned in a dark one, not realizing the change himself. So, when the dog acted aggressively upon seeing something unfamiliar, punishing it would have been a misunderstanding. The fault lay in the change, not in the dog's reaction. Similarly, in life, when we do something out of the ordinary that others may not understand, it's natural for them to react or speculate. If we only blame others for their opinions without reflecting on our own changes, we are no different than Yang Bo contemplating hitting his dog. Liez Tzu this story comes from the teachings of Liezi, compiled in a work known as the Sung Hu Jen Jing, or the Book of True Virtue of Emptiness and Nothingness by Later Generations, an eight-volume collection derived from Li Yu Ku's philosophical doctrines. 5. The Dangers of Haste and Severity In life, some matters can't be fully grasped or understood in a short period. It's essential to allow yourself a little more time to gain a clear understanding, avoiding haste and impatience to prevent adding tension. When guiding others, if immediate compliance isn't achieved, gradually loosening restrictions can lead to natural persuasion. Forcing adherence hastily only increases resistance. During the Western Wei Dynasty, the second son of the deputy governor of Liangzhou, Du Zongtong, took up the deputy governor position in Xi Jingzhou. His character was stubborn and suspicious. Du Zongtong had recently taken a concubine of stunning beauty, whom he adored deeply. One day, this concubine received a letter from her father, 
mentioning his recent hardships and seeking her assistance. While reading the letter by the door, Du Zong Tung walked in. In her embarrassment and not wanting her husband to know of her family's plight, she swallowed the letter. Misinterpreting the action as hiding a lover's letter, Du Zong Tung ordered her abdomen cut open to retrieve it. Before she could even breathe her last, the letter was extracted. Upon reading it, Du Zong Tung lamented, I should not have let my emotions control me. My rashness has caused irreversible damage. How can I hope to last long like this? Overwhelmed with grief, Du Zong Tung died that very night. This story serves as a stark reminder of the grave consequences of acting out of haste and severity, highlighting the importance of patience, understanding, and temperance in our actions and reactions. 6. The Absurdity of Greed In the state of Song, there was a man who lost his dark-colored coat. He took to the streets in search of it. Upon seeing a woman wearing a dark coat, he confronted her, insisting, I've just lost my dark coat and you must compensate me with yours. He then stubbornly clung to her coat, refusing to let go. The woman protested, Your lost coat has nothing to do with me. This coat I'm wearing is mine. I made it myself. The man argued, You have to replace my coat. The dark coat I lost was thick, and the one you're wearing is thin. You owe me a thick coat in exchange for your thin one. There's nothing more to discuss. Commentary The notion of losing a coat at home and searching for it on the streets is laughable. Demanding a woman's coat as a replacement for a man's lost one is even more ridiculous. Insisting on compensation with a thin coat for a lost thick one and seeing it as justified adds another layer of absurdity. Oh, how greed blinds people, making them only consider their own benefit, neglecting right and wrong. Those consumed by such selfishness dare to do and say anything. Alas, in today's world driven by money, there are too many who would demand a coat as described in this story. 7. Do not chase thieves blindly. Beware when disposing of mice. To root out the wicked and deceitful, we must offer them a path to redemption and change. Cornering them completely is like sealing off a mouse's burrow, leaving no escape eventually leading to the destruction of all that is good and beautiful. La Ka, a scholar from the Song dynasty known for his tolerance and extensive knowledge, chose a life of study over a bureaucratic career after being dismissed from his official position. Respected as a teacher in his hometown, he experienced theft in his own garden. Once, when someone stole vegetables from his garden, Lacha hid among the bushes until the thief left. On another occasion, when someone stole a chicken, he brought a jar of wine to the thief's home. The thief, overwhelmed with shame, listened as Lacha apologized, saying, Being fellow villagers, I couldn't cook the chicken you took and felt embarrassed not to offer you wine instead. They ended up drinking together until drunk, and Lacha never spoke of the incident. Afterward, Thefts from his home ceased. This story illustrates the power of understanding and compassion over punitive measures, demonstrating that even those who err can be guided towards better paths through kindness and empathy. 8. The Daylight Thief of the Jin Dynasty In the Jin Dynasty, there was a man known for his greed who one day went to the market and claimed everything he saw. He said, I can eat this, wear this, spend this, and use this, taking items without paying. When vendors demanded payment, he confessed, My greed blinded me. I thought everything in the market was mine, not seeing anyone else around. Please let me take these. When I am rich, I will pay you back. The market's overseer, frustrated with his audacity, punished him and made him return the stolen goods, causing the crowd to burst into laughter. In response, he retorted, There are far greedier people in the world who secretly steal using all sorts of tricks. Although I steal in broad daylight, how am I worse than them? Your laughter shows you haven't thought this through. 
Commentary Those who are blinded by greed and forsake morality for gold are despicable, whether they steal little or much. However, comparing brazen thieves to those who, driven by a lust for wealth, betray mentors, backstab friends, and covertly harm their community, the latter are far more reprehensible. Yet, society often mocks petty thieves without addressing the major villains among us. 9. Understanding deeply to bear great responsibilities. Considering the ever-changing illusion of worldly affairs, not only are fame and wealth deceptive, but even our own limbs and senses are gifts from the heavens. From the perspective of transcending everything in the objective world, not to mention family ties, even all things and beings are unified with oneself. Thus, only by seeing clearly and understanding deeply can one shoulder the responsibilities of the world and free oneself from the chains of fame and profit. In the state of Qi, there was a young man named Lu Kao Kung, merely 18 years of age. One day he intercepted the carriage of King Xuan of Qi and volunteered himself, saying, My family is poor, and I have an elderly mother to care for. Please allow me to serve in a minor official position. King Xuan replied, You are too young to hold office. Lu Kao Kung retorted, Your majesty is mistaken. In the past, Zhuan Shu became a ruler at the age of twelve, and Xiang Yu was a teacher to sages at seven. This shows that your majesty should say I am not talented enough to be used, not that I am too young to be used. King Xuan argued, I have never seen a young horse carry a heavy load. Similarly, a person must be mature to be entrusted with responsibilities by the state. Lu Kao Kung responded, your majesty is incorrect. Every inch has its length. Every yard has its shortness. Hua, Liu, Qi, and Yu, famous horses in ancient texts, are all exceptional horses. But if they were to race against a squirrel in a kitchen, it's not certain they would be faster. Swans and cranes can fly thousands of miles with a single flap. But if they were to race with swallows or bats inside a house, it's not certain they would be more agile. How then is an older person different from me? King Xuan admitted, Well said, why didn't you come to me sooner? He then invited Lu Kao Kung into his carriage to return to the court together and appointed him to an official position. 10. Never forgetting the old. Confucius was walking in the fields when he noticed a woman weeping by a pond's edge. Intrigued, he instructed his disciple to inquire about the cause of her sorrow. The woman explained, Previously, while cutting reeds, I lost my reed hairpin, and that's why I'm crying. Confucius asked why the loss of a mere reed hairpin would bring her to tears. She replied, It's not the loss of the reed hairpin that makes me cry. It's the nostalgia for an old, familiar object that I can no longer find. Reflection. What belongs to us cherished in our hearts becomes irreplaceable even if lost, and finding a similar or superior replacement does not compensate for the loss. Often, encountering something new triggers memories of the old, leading to a pang of nostalgia and sometimes even tears of longing. Why? because what we lose is not merely valued for its physical worth, but seems to contain a part of our soul or the soul of another that was entrusted to us. The initial emotional connection is always the deepest and most enduring. Just as a fox looks back to the mountain, it came from even three years after its death. Humans, regardless of how far they wander, cannot forget their origins. The horses of the north neigh at the wind from the north. The birds of the south choose southern branches for nesting, illustrating that just as animals are drawn to their natural habitats, humans too cannot forget their roots. 11. With abundance, the noble must be cautious. The ailments of old age are often sown in youth through carelessness, 
Acceptance and reprimands are due to seeds of calamity nurtured during moments of success. Thus, when one finds success and fulfillment, it is crucial for a person of noble character to remain vigilant. During the spring and autumn and warring states periods, King Zhuang of Chu hosted a feast to entertain his ministers and warriors with wine. In the midst of the celebration, he asked his favored concubines to serve the wine. This led to some taking advantage of the dim light to tease a beauty, who tearfully complained to King Zhuang. He consoled her, saying, Drunkenness leading to discourtesy is unavoidable. Moreover, how can I disgrace my subjects and valiant men over a single beauty? Thus, he chose not to pursue the matter further. Three years later, during a battle between the states of Jin and Chu, a brave warrior distinguished himself on the battlefield, charging forward and defeating the enemy five times, becoming instrumental in Chu's significant victory. Curious, King Huang inquired why the warrior had risked his life so boldly. The warrior revealed, I deserve death, for I was the one at that feast who, in drunkenness, disrespected the beauty. Not only did your majesty not punish me, but you also forgave my transgression. I've always sought a way to repay your kindness. King Zhuang's act of protecting the warrior during a moment of contentment unexpectedly paid off three years later when the states of Jin and Chu were at war. The grateful warrior, remembering the king's mercy, fought valiantly and risked his life to defend his country. This story underscores the importance of generosity and forgiveness, especially in times of prosperity. Acts of kindness and understanding can have far-reaching effects, inspiring loyalty and bravery in ways one might never anticipate. 12. Mencius and the Virtue of Diligence Mencius traveled from the state of Lu to the state of Qi, visiting an old friend. During their conversation, the friend lamented, Nowadays, who truly cares about righteousness? You exhaust yourself for the sake of virtue, but what does it really accomplish? Wouldn't it be better to just give up? Mencius replied, Imagine a household with ten children where only one works the fields while the others sit idle. Shouldn't that one child work even harder? Why? because the idle ones are many and the workers are few. Now, if the world lacks those willing to do righteous deeds, you should be encouraging me to do even more, not discouraging me. Commentary In times when human virtues and moral standards decline, those who can stand firm should not fall with the tide. If everyone succumbed to moral decay, who would remain to enlighten the misguided and uphold human virtues and morality. Therefore, those who are aware and ambitious, regardless of how tumultuous the times, refuse to be drowned in unrighteousness. Just as the pine and cypress remain green amidst winter's frost and snow, and the rooster still crows despite the stormy dark night, these individuals not only persevere, but also devote their energy and intellect to maintaining culture and guiding the lost. Mencius, seeing his era's degeneration, considered promoting righteousness and encouraging virtuous acts as his duty, truly a benefactor to mankind. 13. Frugality and Integrity, Clumsiness and Honesty Living Wastefully even with an abundance of wealth, will never feel sufficient. This can't compare to those who, despite being poor, manage to live comfortably through frugality. People with the capability to work hard but end up despised by many are not as admirable as those who may seem clumsy and unproductive, yet retain their natural and honest disposition. During the Tang Dynasty, Empress Zhang Sun, the consort of Emperor Taizong Li Ximin, held a high status but never behaved arrogantly or extravagantly. Notably, she lived a life of great frugality, earning a lasting reputation for her virtue. When Empress Zhang Sun fell terminally ill, Emperor Taizong planned a lavish funeral for her. 
Upon hearing this, the Empress said, In life, I made no significant contributions to the country, so in death, I should not be given a grand burial. Moreover, since ancient times, the wise and virtuous have always valued simplicity. Only those who do not understand the true meaning of virtue desire monumental tombs for themselves. Though they aim to secure their legacy for eternity, in reality they go against their wishes, either becoming a subject of ridicule or leaving a stain on their reputation for generations. I believe that only by embracing frugality can one's name truly be remembered forever. Please honor my wishes in this matter. Empress Zhang Sun's request reflects deep wisdom, emphasizing that true legacy and honor come not from the lavishness of one's funeral, but from the virtues lived out in one's life. Her perspective champions the values of simplicity, frugality, and the lasting impact of living a life aligned with these principles. 14. The Way to Conduct Oneself in Life Master Yan Hui asked Confucius, Is it possible to be content in poverty as though one were rich, to be humble yet respected as if noble, to have authority without physical strength, and to mingle with people all my life without fear? Should I aspire to this? Confucius replied, Your inquiry is most commendable. To be poor but content as though rich shows acceptance of one's fate without greed. To be humble yet carry oneself as though noble reflects understanding of humility and decorum. To possess authority without physical strength indicates cautious and respectful conduct without fault. To socialize without fear throughout life means to speak thoughtfully after choosing one's words carefully. Commentary. Desiring neither fame nor fortune indicates valuing heavenly virtues over earthly ones, ensuring no one can look down upon you, thus understanding the importance of personal dignity. Wishing not to burden oneself with worry shows a knowledge of self-preservation and not troubling others. To fully embrace such principles in life signifies a truly refined and elevated form of joy. Months. 15. Encountering evil. Should not prompt immediate hatred. Encountering good need, not hasten friendship. When encountering someone malicious, one should not immediately harbor hatred. It's crucial to carefully consider if there might be someone deliberately framing or seeking revenge. Similarly, upon meeting a person of apparent good nature, don't rush to trust and befriend them, as deceitful individuals may use virtuous facades for personal gain or advancement. During the Warring States period, the respected minister of the state of Song, Ku Yuan, was exiled to the Mi Luo River. One day, observing a farmer and an ox in a standoff, he remarked with a smile, advising, This ox is stubborn and the person is equally stubborn in contesting it. The ox's obstinance cannot be changed, but being more intelligent, a person shouldn't be so stubborn. Surprisingly, the farmer laughed heartily at Ku Yuan's words, responding, Indeed, gaining power and status, much like this water ox, involves foolish and stubborn behavior. Why should you compete with them? The result is harming yourself, ending up here at the Miluo River enduring hardship. Ku Yuan replied seriously, How can this be the same? If I don't compete with the petty Tzu Lan and ignore them, collaborating in their misdeeds, would I, Ku Yuan, then be prioritizing self-preservation, seeking only personal advancement? What would that make me? This story illustrates the wisdom in discerning true character and intentions, cautioning against hastily judging or allying with others based on initial impressions. It emphasizes the value of principled living and the pitfalls of compromising one's integrity for personal gain. 16. Personal Improvement When you encounter someone admirable, strive to emulate them. When you see someone with flaws, reflect to see if you share those shortcomings and work to correct them. 
Preserve your virtues diligently and strive to eliminate your faults. Those who criticize you correctly are your teachers. Those who praise you genuinely are your friends. Meanwhile, flatterers act as adversaries. Therefore, a person of honor values teachers, cherishes friends, despises enemies, loves righteousness without tiring, and heeds admonitions wisely. Doing so ensures improvement even if unintentional. Conversely, a petty person behaves differently. They detest criticism despite its validity, enjoy unwarranted praise, harbor malice like wild beasts, live unethically, resent non-compliance, ally with sycophants, shun advisors, mock the upright, and scorn the faithful. Such behaviors inevitably lead to degradation. Commentary The essence of self-improvement lies in embracing the good and avoiding the bad. Achieving this goal requires not only self-reflection but also considering how others interact with you. With people, it's crucial to respect and emulate those who offer constructive criticism and advice while avoiding and treating flatterers as foes. Prefer to be advised rather than praised. Adopting this mindset is key to personal growth. 17. The peaceful life of the virtuous versus the turbulence of the wicked. Individuals with kind hearts exhibit tranquility in their words and actions, radiating gentleness and calm even in their most reflective moments. In contrast, those with malicious intentions often display deceitful and fierce behaviors, hiding cruelty and ruthlessness even amidst laughter and joy. During the waning days of the Shang dynasty, King Zhou's lack of virtue and indulgence in decadence led to widespread public resentment. Taking advantage of this, the neighboring state of Chu, under the leadership of King Wen of Zhou and with the support of the brilliant military strategist Zhang Zia, grew increasingly powerful. Eventually, they overthrew the Shang dynasty, establishing the Western Zhou dynasty. Zhang Zia, a master of both literature and military strategy, laid the foundations for ancient Chinese military theory. Legend has it that he and his fellow disciples Shun Gongbao were each given a divine book by their teacher as they prepared to leave their mountain retreat. Zhang Ziya found peace and natural beauty within his book, a vision of serene landscapes, whereas Shen Gongbao saw scenes of violence and bloodshed, rivers of blood under a sky filled with the aura of death. Their teacher explained that Jiang Zia's peaceful visions reflected his virtuous soul, while Shen Gongbao's dark visions indicated his wicked heart. Indeed, as history unfolded, Jiang Zia helped King Wu of Zhou defeat the tyrannical King Zhou of Shang, liberating the people from suffering. Meanwhile, Shen Gongbao, assisting the corrupt King Zhou, committed heinous acts against the natural order, further miring himself in villainy. This narrative serves as a reminder that one's true nature is reflected in their perception of the world around them. The virtuous find peace and tranquility. While the wicked live in a world marred by violence and chaos, shaping their destinies accordingly. 18. Waiting for a Rabbit by the Tree A farmer from the state of Song was plowing his field when he encountered a large tree in the middle of his field. Suddenly, a rabbit darted out from somewhere, crashed into the tree trunk, and died. Seeing this, the farmer abandoned his plow, rushed to grab the rabbit, and then sat hugging the tree trunk, hoping for another rabbit to meet the same fate. However, despite his weight, no more rabbits came, and he wasted an entire day of plowing. This behavior became the laughingstock of the community. Commentary This story illustrates the folly of relying on luck or rare occurrences to repeat themselves without effort or understanding. Just like the man who waited for another rabbit by the tree, hoping for the same stroke of luck, without recognizing that fortune is often a fleeting moment.
his stubbornness and failure to grasp the reality of his situation, clinging to a one-time chance as if it were a guaranteed strategy, aligns him with those who might tightly hold on to a musical instrument's keys or mark the spot where a sword fell off a boat, all in vain hope of replicating an improbable event. 19. The folly of seeking eccentricity and going it alone. Valuing eccentricity in appearance indicates a lack of deep understanding, and acting independently without support is unsustainable. Individuals who strive to be markedly different in their behavior or appearance often lack profound wisdom or enduring success. Similarly, those who focus solely on maintaining their reputation or insist on working alone are unlikely to sustain their virtues over time. Tong Jiao, a prime minister during the Song Dynasty, once experienced this firsthand. On the night of the Lantern Festival, while studying the I Ching in his study, he overheard his younger brother, a scholar named Tong Qi, singing and feasting merrily throughout the night. The next day, Tong Jiao sent a trusted envoy to reprimand Tong Kong. The prime minister says to the scholar, I heard that last night you indulged in lavish celebrations, which seems excessively extravagant and wasteful. Do you still remember the Lantern Festival years ago when we were at the Mo Chow School, eating simple meals of rice and salty vegetables? Tong Kai laughed and replied, Please relay this to the Prime Minister. Why do you think back then we were at Mo Chow School eating simple meals? What was the reason for our modesty? Upon hearing this response, Tong Jiao sighed, acknowledging, The pursuit of being outwardly different and acting without consideration for others is indeed fleeting. The ancients were right in saying so. This story underscores the wisdom in embracing simplicity and collaboration. Striving for uniqueness in superficial ways or isolating oneself in endeavors often leads to short-lived achievements while true knowledge and lasting virtue come from understanding and working harmoniously with others. 20. Marking the boat to find the sword. There was a man from the state of Chu crossing a river by boat. While sitting in the boat, he accidentally dropped his sword into the river. In a hurry, he marked the side of the boat saying, my sword fell right here. When the boat reached the shore, he went directly to the mark and dived into the water to look for his sword. However, the boat had moved to the dock, but the sword had not moved with the boat. It remained where it had fallen. Searching for the sword in this manner was utterly foolish. Moral of the story When the sword fell into the river, it stayed exactly at that spot. If one wishes to find the sword, one must dive down right at the spot where it fell. Why mark the boat and wait until reaching the dock to search? This man's approach is as absurd as someone trying to fix the tunes of an iron harp by securing the horse to it, thinking the horse's immobility will naturally harmonize the tunes. Alas, this stubbornness and lack of understanding focus on clinging to something firmly held in hand without grasping the concept of timing. 21. The importance of discretion and vigilance in thought. The mouth serves as the gateway to the heart. Failing to control what comes out can reveal many secrets. Similarly, thoughts are the legs of the heart, leading one down righteous or corrupt paths if not vigilantly guarded. A disciple of Confucius, Zi Lu, once asked his teacher, is it proper for a nobleman in the state of Lu to sleep on a bed during the 27 months of mourning after his parents' passing? Confucius replied, I am unsure. Zi Lu remarked to another disciple, Zi Gong, I thought our teacher knew everything, yet there are rights he's unaware of. Zi Gong offered, Let me inquire on your behalf. He then asked Confucius, Is it appropriate to sleep on a bed while in mourning? Confucius responded, It is not proper. Zi Gong relayed to Zi Lu, 
You claimed our teacher lacked certain knowledge. However, he remains wise. Your question was misplaced. According to our rights, living with nobility means we shouldn't discuss whether the nobleman's actions are right or wrong. We must strictly guard our thoughts and words. The master chose not to betray the principles of propriety over this matter. 22. The Three Lice in Dispute Three lice were found feeding on a pig, squabbling over the best spot to eat and decided to take their dispute to court. Another louse came across them and inquired, What's this argument about among you three? They responded, We're fighting over a particularly lush spot. The other louse advised, I think you're wasting your time with this quarrel. You should be more worried about the butcher's knife and the flame used to singe the pig. Hearing this, the three lice realized their folly and dropped the lawsuit. They decided to stick together, sharing their fortunes whether in abundance or scarcity. As a result, the pig grew thinner by the day, spared from slaughter due to its condition, allowing the lice to thrive indefinitely. The moral of the story is a caution against short-sighted squabbles within a community. If people focus solely on immediate gains without considering long-term welfare for all, their wisdom falls short of even these lice. Disputes, fights, and legal battles lead only to mutual destruction, benefiting no one and harming not just individuals but the community at large. Just as worms perish with the fallen tree they infest, so too do all suffer when the common good is ignored. 23. Distinguishing right from wrong understanding morals is crucial. One should not allow the skepticism of others to cloud their sharp judgment, nor should they stubbornly cling to their views while disregarding the opinions of others. It's important not to let the pursuit of minor personal gains interfere with the greater good of all, nor should one satisfy their personal desires under the guise of public opinion. During the spring and autumn period, Prince Chong'er of the state of Qi and the wife of his minister, Guizhu, were involved in an affair, leading Guizhu to murder Prince Chong'er. Yan Ying, a prominent minister of Qi Yi, upon hearing of the prince's murder, felt compelled to pay his respects, despite others' reluctance to do so. When approached by Guizhu's associates, questioning whether he wished to die for Guizhu or flee the state, Yan Ying responded, One must understand the bigger picture and discern right from wrong. If a ruler dies for his country, his subjects should be willing to die for him. If he flees for the sake of the country, his subjects should flee with him. But if a ruler dies or flees due to personal desires, who would follow him? After saying this, Yan Ying boldly entered Guizhu's residence, removed his headgear, and, ignoring the bodies around Prince Chong'er's, mourned deeply before leaving. This story highlights the importance of moral clarity and the courage to stand by one's principles, even in the face of adversity. 24. Aspiring to do right In the state of Lu, there lived a man who resided alone. Nearby, a widowed woman also lived by herself. One stormy night, the woman's house collapsed and she sought shelter at her neighbor's. The man, however, refused her entry. Standing by the window, the woman exclaimed, How can you be so heartless and not let me in? The man replied, I've heard that only men and women above sixty can live together. You are young, and so am I, which is why I cannot let you stay. The woman questioned, Why not act like Mr. Liu Xia Hui, who could have a woman sit on his lap without scandal? The man answered, Mr. Liu Xiahui could manage that, but I am not capable. If I let you in and fail to maintain his level of propriety, it's better not to let you in at all, thus avoiding any scandal like Mr. Liu Xiahui. Confucius, upon hearing this story, remarked, Exactly. Those who wish to emulate Mr. Liu Xiahui but cannot match his virtue are like this man from Liu, 
aspiring to do right without mimicking others' methods and yet achieving the same wisdom. Commentary This presents a moral dilemma. On a stormy night should a young man welcome a young woman into his home. Refusing may seem unkind for not aiding someone in distress. Yet, welcoming her could lead to misinterpretation and accusations of impropriety. It's a choice between being deemed unkind or unethical, with no easy way to uphold both virtues. The ideal solution, akin to Van Truong's action of lighting torches all night for his sisters-in-law, embodies true chivalry. The man from Lu, though seemingly unkind, adhered to the strict Eastern principle of distinct roles for men and women. 25. Transient Fame, Enduring Virtue Success and literature may fade as humans depart from this life, yet the spirit of resilience can endure through the ages. Career achievements, reputation, and wealth may shift with the times, but only noble virtues are truly immortal. A person of high moral and intellectual caliber will not trade everlasting virtue for temporary acclaim. The Han Dynasty astronomer Zhang Heng often imparted knowledge to his students through dialogue. One day, a student asked, Teacher, you often tell us that purpose is the driving force of life and everyone has their own goals. So what goals should we pursue? Zhang Heng replied, Noble moral character and keen intelligence. His students inquired, Could you elaborate? Zhang Heng explained, A noble person shouldn't worry about not being honored, but should concern themselves with not being virtuous, not being ashamed of scant rewards, but being ashamed of lacking depth and wisdom, embracing simplicity, self-restraint, dedicating oneself to learning and advancement without being ensnared by fame and fortune, is the way to become a person capable of governing a nation and accomplishing great deeds. It was Zhang Heng's profound virtues that made him a distinguished sage, respected for his intellect and resolve. 26. Love should improve, hatred should not deteriorate. It's a common trait. When we love, we see all the good, and when we dislike, we focus on the flaws, praising the sweetness of a lemon when favored and criticizing the sourness of an apple when not. This bias often translates into our actions, where affection can lead to overwhelming support and disdain can result in harsh criticism. In love, we might share three pieces of a bitter melon, but in hatred, we'd split it into ten, highlighting the extremes of our reactions based on personal feelings. Once, the king of the state of Wei deeply adored D.G. Xia. In Wei, stealing the king's carriage was a crime punishable by amputation. D.G. Xia's mother fell severely ill one night, and in his rush to aid her, he used the king's carriage. The king, hearing this, praised D.G. Xia's filial piety, overlooking the crime for his devotion. Another time, while sharing a sweet peach with the king and offering him the better half, D.G. Shia was commended for his love and sacrifice. However, when the king's affection waned, the same actions were criticized as theft and disrespect, leading to D.G. Shia's punishment. This shift illustrates how love and hate can alter perceptions and judgments. Initially deemed a hero, D.G. Shia's unchanged behavior was later seen as treasonous, solely due to the king's changing emotions. When loved, even legitimate faults become virtues. When hated, innocuous actions are criminalized. Therefore, before advising or confronting authority, one must gauge their standing with them. Love and hate can blind us, obscuring the true value of the object of our feelings, whether adoring or despising someone, our perceptions shift dramatically. This tendency not only affects personal relationships, but extends to their affiliates and actions, where love and hate influence our judgment of everything associated with them. To maintain fairness, 
It's crucial to recognize and separate our subjective feelings from the objective value of those we either cherish or disdain, acknowledging the good and bad in everyone. 27. Beyond appearances, free of attachment. The wind blowing through the sparse bamboo forest creates rustling sounds. Once it passes, the forest returns to its quiet state, leaving no trace of the rustling. A swallow flies over the cold pond, casting a reflection on the water. Yet, when it flies away, the water remains undisturbed, leaving no image behind. Therefore, a person of noble character acts according to their true nature, but returns to tranquility once the deed is done. During the Three Kingdoms period, Liu Bei, the ruler of the Shu Kingdom, led his forces to campaign against Eastern Wu. Sun Quan, the king of Eastern Wu, appointed Lu Xun as the Grand Admiral to lead 50,000 troops in defense. Lu Xun believed that Liu Bei's forces, being fresh and vigorous, should not be engaged immediately. By avoiding battle, the enemy's morale would naturally diminish over time, and then he would seize the opportunity to strike. However, his subordinates, failing to grasp his strategy, perceived him as cowardly and unwilling to fight, leading to resentment and dissatisfaction among the ranks. They relied on their numerical strength and did not want to follow orders. Lu Xun, drawing his sword, declared, Though I am but a scholar, I have been entrusted with this task by our king. You must follow my command because I have the expertise and valid reasons to endure humiliation and hardship. Those responsible for guarding our borders must not act recklessly. Military law is merciless and must not be violated. Lu Xun's words were gentle yet firm, showing his determination while also expressing his anger, commanding respect from his soldiers and officers alike, and ensuring no further disobedience. Subsequently, Lu Xun successfully defeated Liu Bei's forces using fire as a strategic element. 28. The Devotion of a Married Couple Believing his end was near and seeing his young wife, a man's love for her was so profound he couldn't bear the thought of leaving her alone. Out of immense love, he provided greatly for her. His wife, fearing he would be too attached to her beauty and struggle to pass on peacefully, chose to disfigure herself by gouging out one of her eyes to ease his mind, demonstrating her absolute devotion and unity with him. Madame Liu, the stunningly virtuous wife of Mr. Feng Xuan Ling experienced similar devotion. Feng, in his younger years and in poor health, once thought he was on his deathbed. He called Liu to his side and said, My illness is severe, and you are still young. You should not remain alone. Find happiness with another husband after I'm gone. Hearing this, Liu wept bitterly. She then retreated and mutilated herself by gouging out an eye, signaling to her husband that even if he died, she would not remarry. Miraculously, Feng Xuan Ling recovered from his illness. He later succeeded in his examinations, rising to a high governmental position. He cherished and respected Liu immensely, never taking another concubine. Outsiders believe this was because he feared Liu's jealousy. Even Emperor Taizong of Tang, curious about Liu's loyalty, tested her. One day, the Empress summoned her, saying, It is customary for high officials to have concubines. The minister is getting old, and the Emperor wishes to grant you a beautiful woman. Liu steadfastly refused. Enraged, the Emperor scolded, If you are not jealous, you shall live, but if you are, you shall die and ordered her to drink what appeared to be poison. Without hesitation, Liu took the cup and drank it all. Witnessing her unwavering loyalty, the emperor exclaimed, Even I am afraid, let alone Xuan Ling. This story highlights the depth of commitment and sacrifice within a marriage, where both partners showed unparalleled devotion, influencing even the highest powers with their integrity and love. 
29. Embracing Destiny. Let it be as it may. Buddhism values following the natural course of cause and effect, while Confucianism emphasizes fulfilling one's duties. The phrase, tu duyen tu viai, which signifies navigating life's challenging seas with ease, reflects a common understanding that life's uncertainty sparks the pursuit of perfection. Thus, amidst life's chaos, finding tranquility and contentment in every situation, regardless of the location, is essential. Once upon a time, by a stream, two elders were fishing on separate rocks. Elder Jia effortlessly caught many fish, while Elder Yi struggled to catch even one. Puzzled, Yi inquired about their differing fortunes despite using the same bait and fishing in the same stream. Jia explained, When I fish, I focus solely on myself, oblivious to the fish, maintaining unwavering concentration. The fish, unaware of my presence, easily fall for the bait. You, however, are fixated on catching fish, which disrupts your focus and scares them away. Everything must follow its natural course. By maintaining a joyful and satisfied demeanor, you'll naturally attract success. Following Jia's advice, Yi too began catching fish. Reflection. This story symbolizes the importance of detachment and living in the moment. The act of fishing without the constant thought of the catch mirrors the approach of letting life unfold naturally, embracing whatever comes with a joyful heart. It teaches us that by not clinging to outcomes, we create space for serenity and unexpected successes. 30. Sentiment and Misplaced Affections Human beings naturally harbor sentiments, which overflow in moments of deep emotion, revealing themselves fully. However, once these sentiments are misplaced, they can never return to their former purity. There was a man from Yan who was born in Yan, lived in Zhao during his youth, and returned to his homeland in his old age. While passing through Jin, close to Yan, with friends, one of them deceitfully pointed to a city saying, This is Yan. The man became visibly sad, a stark change in his demeanor. Then, pointing to a plain, This is your village, leading the man to sigh in sorrow. Pointing at a house, This is your ancestral home, which made him tear up. And pointing to a mound, This is your ancestor's grave, causing him to burst into tears. His companions laughed, revealing it was a joke and they were actually in Jin, not Yan. Embarrassed upon learning the truth, when the man finally saw his true homeland, his emotions were numbed, not as heartfelt as before. Commentary Just as humans readily express deep feelings in the face of significant moments, these emotions can be irrevocably altered when misapplied. A person who has devoted loyalty to the undeserving or given love to the unworthy may find their capacity for genuine affection diminished, even when later encountering truly noble individuals. This is akin to the man from Yan, who wasted his tears on falsehoods and found himself emotionally spent upon facing reality. Thus, it's crucial for people to cultivate their character through learning and adhere to moral principles for their emotions to be appropriately and meaningfully engaged. Throughout history, the wise and virtuous have always understood how to rightly harness and express their feelings. 31. Contentment is bliss. Adaptability is survival. Those who find satisfaction in what they possess experience a bliss akin to living in a heavenly realm, while those always wanting more remain trapped in the mundane world. It's concluded that individuals who are adaptable and astute grasp opportunities firmly, whereas the passive and clumsy often encounter peril. During the Tang Dynasty, Kong Ruosi, renowned for his scholarly pursuits, received an offer of many volumes of genuine calligraphy works by the famous Chu Tai Liang. Kong Ruo Si accepted only one volume. 
the giver questioned, these calligraphy pieces are rare treasures of the world, more precious than gold and silver. Why wouldn't you take them all? Kong Ruo Si replied, if it's more valuable than gold and silver, then one volume is already too much for me. He then generously shared half of the volume he received. Later, Kong Ruo Si was recommended for the imperial examination and successively promoted to a significant official position. He often remarked to others, being an official up to this rank satisfies me. He kept a still water vase by his side as a symbol of his contentment and fulfillment in life. 32. Seeking Simple Happiness Nothing is absolute. In life, where there is joy, there will inevitably be sorrow. Where there is beauty, there will also be ugliness in contrast. It's the ordinary meals with family and the everyday natural scenery that truly provide genuine peace and contentment. Once upon a time, Mo Yu was a performing artist in the capital's theater scene. Originally from the distinguished Man family, he pursued his passion for drama, becoming a celebrated performer. When an opportunity to inherit a title within his family arose, societal norms because of his profession barred him. Some advised him, acting is considered lowly, while titles and honors are esteemed. It's only natural for one to abandon the lesser for the greater prestige. Mo Yu responded, I find fortune in being a performer, never feeling demeaned. On stage, I embody emperors and generals alike, captivating audiences. What more could I seek? When others remarked that his roles were mere illusions, Mo Yu questioned, Do you consider the prestige of titles to be real? Or might they be stripped away before they're even enjoyed? 33. Maintaining Peace of Mind Amid noise and keeping warmth and coldness, in the bustling journey of life, being able to observe the changing world in silence can significantly reduce unnecessary worries. Adversity may lead to discouragement, yet maintaining the will to persevere can bring genuine joy to life. Confucius's student, Yuan Xian, lived in poverty in the state of Lu, while another disciple, Zi Gong, enjoyed wealth in the state of Wei. Yuan Xian's life was endangered by his poverty, and Zi Gong's health was compromised by his wealth. Both poverty and excessive wealth have their downsides. So, what is the ideal state? The ancient Chinese philosopher Yang Ju stated, A person can be happy or at peace for a lifetime. Those who know how to enjoy life do not feel the burden of poverty, and those who cherish tranquility do not seek wealth and luxury. Wealth is merely external, not taken in life or after death. It shows that wealth and life are unrelated. However, people often fail to see this truth, living and dying for wealth, turning their lives into a cycle of accumulating and spending money without experiencing life's true pleasures. Shun Zi remarked, A person who practices moderation lives expansively even in hardship and remains respectful and at ease in wealth. They do not become lax in leisure nor lose dignity in toil. A virtuous person, when successful, punishes without severity and rewards without excess under joy, truly embodies the qualities of a gentleman. These teachings highlight the importance of inner peace and enthusiasm, regardless of external circumstances, advocating for a balanced and mindful approach to life's challenges and fortunes. 34. Progress Through Simplicity and Sincerity Literature values straightforward reality as the pathway to advancement, just as morality treasures sincerity and naturalness as the foundation for cultivation. The word awkward carries infinite meaning. It's akin to the barking of a dog amidst a peach garden or the crowing of a rooster in a mulberry forest, pure and full of character. Yet, the reflection of the moon on a chilly pond or a crow perched on a dry branch while beautiful may convey a sense of decline to the observer. During the Warring States period, a high official from the state of Liang named Song Xu 
served as a county magistrate on the border adjacent to the state of Chu. People from both Liang and Chu grew melons. Liang's melons were large and sweet, thanks to meticulous care and regular watering. Chu's melons, neglected and poorly watered, were not as flavorful. Jealous of Liang's superior melons, Chu's people often stole from Liang's melon gardens. When the people of Liang reported these thefts to Song Xu, hoping for permission to capture the thieves, Song Xu advised against it, emphasizing the importance of sincerity and mutual love between neighbors. Instead, people from Liang helped water the melons in Chu, which gradually improved their quality. Touched by this gesture, the king of Chu sent a thousand gold pieces as a token of gratitude and sought a friendly alliance with Liang. This act fostered a harmonious relationship between the two states. 35. Finding Perspective in Adversity When facing unfavorable situations, it's wise to think of those less fortunate than oneself, as this quickly dissipates feelings of resentment. And when the spirit wanes, looking up to those who show greater resilience can instantly uplift one's morale. During the Warring States period after the state of Wu destroyed the state of Yue, King Gujian of Yue was determined to revive his country and seek revenge against Wu. To achieve this goal, he started with himself, setting an example of perseverance. He personally worked in the fields, and his wife wove their clothes. They lived frugally, consuming only the food they grew and wearing only the clothes they made. They ate just enough to stay hungry and wore simple or old clothing to avoid extravagance and resist the allure of luxury. Gu Jian avoided taking additional concubines and once told Zi Kong, I do not indulge in lavish feasts, crave delicacies, gaze upon beauties, or listen to flattery. He did this in anticipation of the day when he would face Wu in a decisive battle. To prevent himself from succumbing to complacency and luxury, Gu Jian placed a bag of gall on his bed. Whenever he felt tired or lazy, he would taste the gall and remind himself, Gu Jian, have you forgotten the taste of losing your country? Eventually, Yu Wei grew stronger and succeeded in defeating Wu. This story teaches us about the importance of perspective and resilience in overcoming adversities, reminding us that hardships can lead to greatness if faced with determination and a clear focus on our goals. 36. The Balance Between Strictness and Friendship Being overly strict can alienate those who wish to excel, while making friends indiscriminately can attract the insincere. Employing people should not be done with excessive harshness, as it might drive away those eager to progress. Similarly, befriending too freely may open the door to flatterers seeking to get close. The brother of a high-ranking official in the state of Song, Tu Man Gu, had a sibling, Huan Tai, who harbored treacherous plans against Song. Song King wanted another brother, Huang Sao, to lead an army against him. However, Huang Sao joined forces with Huan Tai in rebellion, eventually fleeing to another country after their failure. Despite Tu Man Gu's disagreement with his brother's actions, he faced cold treatment in Song thereafter. He used his lands and jade as leverage for his life and wandered in exile. Once, lamenting his lack of good siblings, Tu Ha advised him, saying, I've heard it said, life and death are destined, and wealth is determined by heaven. A person who lives uprightly, not committing wrongs, and befriends others with respect and propriety will find friends everywhere, so why despair over not having good siblings? Indeed, based on these principles of mutual respect and decency, people can coexist harmoniously, treating each other like family. The Confucian ideals of benevolence, righteousness, Propriety, wisdom, and trust aim precisely at this unity, fostering a world where everyone is considered brethren under the moral and ethical norms of humanity. 37. 
in the midst yet beyond. In the tumultuous waves of the open sea, those aboard the boat remain fearless, while those watching from shore are struck with terror. Similarly, in the midst of a chaotic feast where insults fly, the attendees may be unaware, yet onlookers are horrified. Hence, a person of virtue, even when deeply involved in affairs, should let their spirit transcend the immediate situation to maintain clarity and calm. A renowned scholar of the Eastern Jin dynasty, Tao An, exemplified this principle. Before assuming any official duties, he joyfully explored mountains and rivers, unconcerned with worldly matters. He often invited friends to enjoy the beauty of nature with him, accompanied by musicians. Once, during a boat trip with friends, they encountered a storm. While everyone else panicked, Tao An sang leisurely, his calmness alleviating their fears. The sailors proceeded to set sail into the open sea, facing even stronger winds. It was then that Tao An calmly suggested, let's head towards the shore. How can we return otherwise? The sailors immediately steered the boat back. Everyone admired Tao An's serene composure amidst the storm. This story illustrates the importance of maintaining an inner peace and detachment, even when physically engaged in challenging situations, allowing for wise and calm decision-making. 38. The True Delight of Poetry and the Mysteries of Zen Teaching A person who is illiterate yet filled with poetic sensibility truly grasps the essence of poetry. Similarly, one who may not know a single verse yet is rich in the wisdom of Zen can be said to have understood the marvels of Zen philosophy. Hui Neng, the sixth patriarch of Zen, came from a poor background and was uneducated, thus illiterate, living by chopping wood. At the age of 24, he was directed to Mount Wang Mei to learn the Buddhist teachings from the fifth patriarch, Hongren. His daily duties included pounding rice, and silently practicing his meditation. One day, Hongren asked his disciples to express their enlightenment in a verse, promising to pass on the Zen Dharma to the one who could reveal the true essence of Zen. Sheng Xiu, Hongren's leading disciple, wrote a verse that was highly praised. The body is the Bodhi tree. The mind is like a clear mirror stand. At all times we must strive to polish it, and must not let the dust collect. However, Hui Nung offered a different perspective, asserting, Originally, there is no Bodhi tree, nor a mirror stand. All is void, so where can the dust alight? This verse stunned everyone with its portrayal of the absolute nature of Zen, ultimately leading to Hui Neng being chosen as Hongren's successor in transmitting the Zen teachings. This story highlights the profound understanding that true enlightenment and the essence of Zen go beyond the superficial and penetrate to the very core of existence, transcending conventional knowledge and wisdom. 39. Studying the I Ching in a pine forest, discussing the classics amidst bamboo, sitting quietly by the window in the early dawn, Reading the I Ching, sharpening my inkstone with dewdrops fallen on pine leaves, and highlighting profound ideas in the text. By dusk, sitting by my reading table engrossed in the classics, letting my soul drift with the crisp sounds mingling with the breeze, spreading throughout the bamboo forest. Wang Mian from Juji, Zhejiang, was deeply engrossed in learning from a very young age. While herding cattle in the fields, he would sneak into schools to listen to students recite their lessons, memorizing them silently. His mother, noticing his passion, suggested to his father, with such fervor, why not let him pursue education? Thus, Wang Mian ended up living in a monastery under a monk's care. At night, he would secretly enter the Buddha Hall, sit on Buddha statue's knees, and read tirelessly under the lamplight until dawn. Most statues in the hall, made of clay with fierce expressions, 
could intimidate others, but Wang Mian, being a child, paid no heed, as if he saw nothing. A scholar from Anyang, Han Xing, amazed by Wang Mian's dedication to learning, took him as a disciple. Wang Mian's diligent study eventually made him a wise and knowledgeable man, well-versed in ancient and modern times. When someone proposed recommending him for a governmental position, Wang Mian said, I have land to cultivate and books to read. Why would I trade that for handling case files in court from dawn till dusk, selling my life to others? 40. Equanimity. Beyond the quiet and the chaos. Individuals often seek solitude to experience peace, deliberately avoiding crowded places for a serene atmosphere. However, this intentional avoidance is, paradoxically, a form of attachment. True tranquility becomes elusive because the very search for silence is the root of unrest. How can one achieve a state where they see themselves as part of humanity, transcending both silence and noise? During the reign of Emperor Yao in ancient China, there was a man named Xu Yu. Emperor Yao recognized Xu Yu's exceptional abilities and wanted to entrust him with the governance of the empire. Upon hearing this, Xu Yu fled to the north of the Ding River in central China, seeking refuge beneath Mount Ji. When Emperor Yao summoned him to serve as the leader of the Nine Provinces, Xu Yu, wanting no part in it, went to the Ding River to cleanse his ears. At that moment, the renowned Hermit Sao Fu happened by, intending to water his ox. Seeing Xu, you washing his ears, Sao Fu inquired about the reason. Xu, you explained, Emperor Yao called upon me to govern, but I detest such news and thus am cleansing my ears. Sao Fu responded, If you truly wish to remain hidden, dwelling in deep mountains and secluded from all, who would notice you? Your deliberate wandering aims to make your virtue known. Washing your ears in this river only pollutes the water for my ox. With that, he led his ox upstream. This story illustrates the concept of true equanimity, living with an open heart amidst the world's tumult and tranquility, unattached to the pursuit of silence or the avoidance of noise. It challenges us to find peace within ourselves, regardless of our external circumstances. 41. Finding Peace in the Mountains facing worldliness upon return. Living in the depths of the mountains opens the soul to purity and serenity, where every encounter embodies a higher sentiment. Seeing clouds drift and birds soar sparks thoughts transcending the mundane. Encountering a clear mountain stream inspires a desire to cleanse all that is sordid and worldly caressing ancient pines and winter plum blossoms standing bravely against the snow evokes a disregard for worldly cares and calculations. However, returning to the bustling world, one quickly realizes that everything seems disconnected from oneself, even feeling as though one's very physical presence is superfluous. During the spring and autumn period, the exiled crown prince Chong Hare of Jin endured 19 years of hardships in foreign lands, with Ji Ji Tui loyally by his side, contributing greatly. Upon his return and ascension as Duke Wen of Jin, he rewarded many but overlooked Ji Ji Tui. This oversight led to public criticism for ingratitude. Ashamed, Duke Wen attempted to summon Ji Ji Tui from his mountain retreat, where Ji had chosen a life devoted to filial piety and solitude. Duke Wen's efforts to force his return by setting the mountain ablaze only solidified Ji's resolve. Choosing honor over submission, Ji Ji Tui and his mother perished embracing a tree, preferring death to forsaking their principles. This tale reflects the contrast between the tranquility of natural seclusion and the complexities of social life, underscoring the eternal struggle between spiritual fulfillment and worldly obligations.
42. Less noise, more peace, the foundation of joy. Life becomes more transcendent when we can let go of one thing, distancing ourselves from the material world. Reducing hostile interaction saves us from many troubles. Cutting down on our words prevents numerous mistakes and accusations. Tempering impatience conserves our energy. And curbing cunning preserves our innate innocence. Those who only seek to add to their lives, never subtracting, are truly bound by their own existence. In ancient China, there was a temple called Southern Sky. Near this temple lived an old woman known as the Weeping Old Lady. She cried when it rained and wept when it was sunny, praying and crying incessantly. The head monk of Southern Sky Temple asked her, Old lady, why do you cry? Tears streaming, she replied, Reverend, you might not know my plight. I have two daughters. The elder married a shoemaker, the younger an umbrella seller. On sunny days, I worry for my younger daughter's business, and when it rains, I fret over my elder daughters. That's why I'm sorrowful. The monk advised, Old lady, don't cry. Whether it rains or shines, we should all be grateful and live well. On sunny days, think of your elder daughter's prosperity. When it rains, consider your younger daughter's success. Wiping away her tears, the old lady smiled. From that day forward, the weeping old lady laughed joyfully, leading a happy and contented life. 43. Mastering Circumstances with Self-Control Using oneself to master circumstances, one can live freely and at ease. Holding and controlling things, one may not find joy in achievements nor sorrow in losses, instead feeling content with life's flow. Conversely, being dominated by external factors leads to resentment in adversity and joy in success, with minor issues potentially restricting oneself. In the Warring States period in Luoyang, there was Bak Kui, a prominent merchant after Fan Li. Bak Kui adhered to a business principle encapsulated in the phrase, When others hold, I release. When others release, I hold. His business primarily dealt with agricultural byproducts. According to his principle, during bountiful harvests when rice prices fell due to increased market supply, he would purchase and store grain, which is, when others hold, I release. In years of famine, when rice prices soared, he would sell his stored grain, a strategy referred to as, when others release, I hold. By not overly pressing prices when rice was cheap and not excessively raising prices when rice was expensive, he managed supply and demand to maintain profit, earning him praise as the sage of grain commerce. Baku took pride in his business acumen, emphasizing that a successful merchant must cultivate four aspects, wisdom, courage, humanity, and strength, to stand firm and unbeaten in the complex and changing market. 44. The sublime pleasure of literature and the natural world. Being bound or set free lies within one's own mind. If the soul can perceive and understand, even a butcher's tavern can transform into a paradisiacal haven. Without a purified spirit, even leisurely pursuits like playing music, strolling with cranes, or cultivating flowers while refined cannot escape the inner demons that bind. There's a saying, only by transcending the mundane can one enter the true realm. A monk ignorant of the path is no different from a layman. During the Song Dynasty, Emperor Song Jinzong heard of a poet named Yang Ji, known for his beautiful calligraphy, and summoned him, hoping to witness his poetic talent and offer him a position at court. Upon arrival, Yang Ji claimed he had never written poetry. The emperor inquired if anyone had composed a poem for him during his visit. Yang Ji mentioned only his wife had gifted him with a poem, thinking even his wife was poetic, and suspecting Yang Ji's humility was a guise, the emperor's interest piqued, 
and he requested to hear the poem. Yang Ji recited, More lost the soul in strong wine's embrace, the deeper the passion for poetry's grace. Summoned today to the palace's call, I part ways with the old man once and for all. Emperor Zhen Zong, amused by the clever refusal, let Yang Ji return home. The term hermit historically refers to two types, those who retreat for fame, cleverly seeking recognition and profit, and those who genuinely withdraw into nature, ending their days far from any officialdom. Yang Ji belonged to the latter. His refusal to compose wasn't for lack of skill, but a deliberate choice to use his wife's alleged poem as a retort to Emperor Zhen Zong's demands. Yang Ji epitomized the true hermit, revealing his stance through wit rather than confrontation, choosing solitude over courtly honors. 45. Letting things be, gradually freeing the mind from distractions. Today, people yearn for a mind unburdened by distractions, yet achieving this state seems elusive. The key to preventing past distractions from lingering and avoiding new ones in the future is to simply let go of the distractions at hand. Naturally, this will lead to a state of mind free from clutter. Lam Te, a revered ancient monk from Japan, once remarked, Before my enlightenment, all seemed dark around me, as if I was trapped in a barrel of ink. Thus, the act of liberating oneself from delusion and achieving enlightenment came to be known as breaking out of the ink barrel. For instance, the great nun known as Ten Dai Ya, who once stayed at the Tung Kien Temple, dedicated her strength to assisting the temple by carrying water. One day, as she was carrying water, the bottom of her bucket fell out, spilling all the water. In that moment, she realized enlightenment and composed a verse. Ten Dai carries water. The bucket's bottom falls out. Water cannot hold, nor can the moon. From that day on, she truly broke out of the ink barrel. Similarly, Monk Bon K wrote, The old bucket's bottom falls out, the heavens and earth in one circle. With the bottom gone, only a circle remained encompassing the entire universe.